Welcome. This is 30 Minutes of Truth for Life with Pastor Poole, pastor of the Bethesda Baptist Church located in Muskegon, Michigan. Join Bethesda each week on this station as we meet the challenge of change through Truth for Life. And now, Pastor Poole. Let's talk about these boundaries for just a couple of minutes. And let's let's narrow it today to the woman. First of all, and I use the term woman, boundary number one. She was a female. And because she was, there were boundaries in the society that she lived in. There are boundaries in our time that have to do with the sexes. In our living day by day, according to what you appear to be, there are things that can free you or bind you. Some of the speeches that were made this week, there were references made to the fact that one of the things that this administration that we live in was seeking to improve was that women would have equal pay for equal work. And the fact that her gender 
has kept her from getting what she ought to get. Not because she didn't have the skill, but because she was a woman. Just because she was a woman. This woman that I speak of, who was in Mark's writing, is a woman who is not only hindered because she is female, but because she's Gentile. Yes, sir. She's a Seraphonician woman, a Grecian woman. And as I look at us in here today, whether you're male or female, mm -hmm. there are some boundaries, there are some hindrances, yes. there are some things that, that imprison us that doesn't have anything to do with your brains, yeah. <laughs> doesn't have anything to do with your intelligence. It has to do with what you look like, your color. We live in a day where we have the boundary of race. And because we do, we have to be conscious of certain things. And still, even in 2012, there are regions of this land that is called the land of the free and the home of the brave yes, sir. that you can travel to. But you, if like some of us in here who have experienced it, uh -huh. have to be, have to have the feeling of fear, anxiety, and tension because of where you are and because you know that there have been, over the years, boundaries in those areas. I can remember the day when you couldn't stay in a hotel. And I remember the day, and I was a part of it, experienced it, when I lived in a hotel, that there were folk in sheets, with firecrackers who danced outside the hotel to create fear and remind us who were there of the boundaries, the things that were supposed to keep us in tow and not allow us to enjoy those things that those of the other race enjoy boundaries that were negative. And this woman who had this sixth child was up against a negative boundary. And it is seen if you read the story closely and what takes place as Jesus has his time with her. Listen to what he said. She's coming to seek something for herself and her daughter. And in so many words, it's almost that Jesus said, I don't have time right now. Stand in line. Wait. We'll get to you later. Somebody else has to be taken care of first. Hmm. I can remember the days when the fountains were marked. You didn't drink here, you didn't drink there. I can remember the days when I stood in line and said, get out and move over there, boy. And even if you wanted to say, don't call me, boy, you were careful not to speak. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because you might not get a chance to speak again. Boundaries. This this woman was faced with that, and and if you read the story closely, you will see that what Jesus says to her amplifies the boundary. Stand. 
Stand in line. Get behind. What I've come to do is not for you. Not right now. All of that's in there. All of that's in there. A boundary. But then I want you to read further. And find that what James talks about is faith that is real and alive. She says, why? Even the dogs eat at this table. Which was to say that even though the children must be fed first, the crumbs from what the children eat is eaten by the dogs. And the dogs have life. The dogs have health because of the crumbs that have fallen from the table. Feed the children. When I look at those interpositions that come and are a part of what goes on there, I have to be mindful of this day and how God's grace takes care of us. Where well, even though there are boundaries, His grace. His grace, yes, sir. His grace yes, sir. eradicates yes, sir. and takes care of you and me. Now, there's another thing I want to mention about this story. And that is that sometimes when God is doing things for us, even though we are the recipients, we are least knowledgeable of what God is doing. I want to say that again. Even though we are the recipients, we are least knowledgeable of what God is doing. Because we get caught up not with positive boundaries but with negative boundaries. What keeps your boy from going to school? A negative boundary. What is the negative boundary? The negative boundary is that somebody has caused him believe to believe that even if he goes to school, it won't mean anything. Get all that education, you still won't get no money. And we've taught them that money is the prime thing in the world. And so that negative boundary, which is what? Loss of hope, no desire, fear, and the belief that little folk like me and you in this world and other folk in this world have an extraordinary power over other people. So no matter what they do, they're never going to get anything or be anybody or be able to enjoy the things that God has placed in this world for them. Because there is still another boundary that locks them in. And that is that even if you give me the opportunity, I fear failing at it. And do you know, I've kind of factored that into our Christian lives. I think that there are some of us who are so afraid of winning 
that we're losing. So afraid of getting ahead that we're going backward. So afraid that it will not come to pass. That we become deaf like the man in the story. We cannot hear. And worse than that, we become like him because we don't speak. And therefore we fail to communicate with God about our need. But this woman, she stands out because of God's grace. She's important. And she does not, she is not silent. She speaks up. And there is something that causes her to speak up and to speak out. And what causes her to speak up and speak out is the fact that she has faith. That despite the rebuff, the pushing back, the non-acceptance apparently of Jesus, she still believes. And that it will be done. Therein, I tell you, is a secret that we need to grab hold of. That in spite of our like of being able to see all of the vision of God, God is still working to overcome boundaries, the boundaries that begin in us. the boundary of our like of faith that God is able to do all things. Every one of us in here suffer from that. I didn't leave me out. I said every one of us Suffer from that. We come to a point when we hear the word of God and it challenges us to reach out and do that which God has called us to do. We come to a point where when we are called to do specifics, we don't believe it can be done. Grace can overcome that boundary. Grace, God's favor, can overcome that boundary. And grace causes that boundary to be overcome. When the love of God works so in my heart that I cannot help but be obedient to his call. And when I stand up not knowing what is going to happen, but declaring that I'm going to meet the challenge. He provides the strength and the direction that is needed even when I'm rebelling. Mm -hmm. 
the story doesn't end with her talking to Jesus about it. The story ends when she goes home and finds that the statement made to her is a true statement. For she finds her daughter laid out without the problem that she had before. But it was because she had faith. Faith, number one, to speak up. Yes. A whole lot of silent folk in the church. Always sitting around. Sissy-like. <laughs> Not willing to speak out for the Lord. Not willing to take on the challenge. Yes. Okay. Not even studying for the debate. Yes. Study to show yourself approved. Yes. That you will be a workman who's not ashamed. Yes. Rightly dividing the word of Not trying to make a name for yourself. But recognizing it's all for the glory of God. Yes. Well, let me hasten here. What are your boundaries? Do you know I want to suggest you get acquainted with them. For you can't destroy them until you become acquainted with them. Get acquainted with your fear. Why you fear. Get acquainted with your doubts. The reason for your doubts. Get acquainted with your weakness. The reason for your weakness. Get acquainted in that relationship that you've shied away from because you can't live without relationship. Get acquainted with them. And when you get acquainted with them, you're going to find the answer. That God's grace is sufficient in every situation. Are you hearing me? God's grace is sufficient in every situation. Whose grace? God's grace. Is sufficient in every situation. Not my smarts. Not my muscle. Not my influence. But God. Is sufficient in every situation. Now let me let me let me just emphasize another point about this woman. When he told her no, she didn't give up. When he said this is not for you, she didn't stop asking. She started talking about the reasons why the children are fed. Why not me? All right. The dogs are fed. Why not me? Yeah. Why are they so important and I'm left out? I 
guess I want to stop there. We used to sing a song some time ago. It was often sung in the church. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. Y'all remember hearing that? You can't make me doubt him. I know, I know, I know too much. About him. I can imagine that woman when she got home and she saw that girl in her right senses and looking healthy and a smile on her face. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. He saved my soul. I know too much about him. He fed me. He gave me a drink when I needed it. He did everything that was necessary to make me whole. I know too much about him. If you have a boundary today, and I know you do, keep on talking to him. It may seem like he's not listening, or his answer may not be right now what you want to hear, but keep on talking to him. Keep on praying. Keep on crying. Keep on bothering. After a while. He'll answer like he wanted him to answer. After a while. It's all going to be all right. After a while. He's going to speak and say, well done. may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time.